Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I hope to get Camden Kerman on a flyby trajectory around the moon, and then return him safely back to Kerbin. Not Kerbin. Earth. Earth. Because it's Earth, and it's got Earth's continents and everything. So, that's the plan. Now, you see I've installed Fusebox here, and so Fusebox is now telling me that we've got about nine days worth of electricity however that's not entirely true it's because um, it's calculating the darkness time based on a 100 kilometer Kerbin orbit and uh, well it's not like I have a real choice for uh, for Earth uh, I don't know if it's I, yeah I think it's calculating uh, Kerbin small Kerbin six hour or uh, six hour rotation stuff so so yeah I'm not too sure how accurate this particular calculation is. I think we're all right on battery, uh, considering our maximum battery is 48,000. Yeah. So, should be all good, and even then, nine days should be enough. We should be fine. Okay, no more liquid auction, right. Maybe we should hide the fuse box. Let's get that over here. There we go. So, now, the more perceptive of you might have figured out that I've got a bit of a challenge ahead of me and that's because I didn't launch this with the intention of sending it to the moon not at all and so my inclination with respect to the moon is completely opposite as you can see uh, we've got uh, 52 degrees difference that's a lot and that's certainly not something I'm going to correct in this close to earth so so first I want to boost out towards the moon and then I'll correct the inclination. Now thankfully in version 23.5 it's a little bit more reliable to do the maneuver nodes ahead of time. They won't go away on you every time you EVA for instance. So let's see what we can do about this. Now there's also the complication that I have to be able to relight the engines and if it turns out that we run out of the Ullage rockets, I might be able to... oh dear, okay. Um, might be able to use uh, RCS to spin the craft around in order to... in order to deal with it. Hmm. Uh, okay, well that's a very weird encounter. Not really what I want to do, but it's uh, heartening to see an encounter. That's always nice. Let's say we boost more from here and less from here. Huh. Might not be bad. Let's see now. If we... We get pretty far away from the moon though. I don't like that. Is there any way we can get closer in? Okay. No, oh, it's still within doable range. Huh. We've got a lot of fuel. We've got enough for 4,000 delta V when we really only need 3,000 for a moon transfer. So that's positive. How much are we actually using here? Oh, I can't even see. Uh, come on. Well, we can see by bringing this up, because that's next one. Okay, almost 3,000 here. So it actually does too much already. We can't do these, this combination. How far are we getting with this? Hmm. Still a high encounter. <clears> though a return trajectory. I do like return trajectories. Uh, looks like we're getting closer there. Not that much closer though. Psst. That's too much. Uh, 4,800 combined. That's not right. How do I make this less? 
so I can get a moon encounter and yeah technically we have enough delta V but I do want to save some of that for return because we're gonna have to drop our orbit back into the atmosphere okay I, I'm not gonna try and tempt my fate too much more than this uh, looks like 700 and uh, 670 kilometers moon periapsis I'll probably have to do like minor tweaks I'm using the mouse wheel and everything oh we can get it closer oh yes but uh, we might as well wait until I do the first burn before trying that out and I need to find out how much this is oh only a thousand sixty I wonder what I was doing wrong for the other ones I guess I was just somehow plotting too far away I really need to be around here interesting uh, so I'll have to take a look at how I did that so I don't have to waste too much more so yeah so we've got a combination of 3000 and then 1060 just about how much this stage has so that's perfect okay so I have to try to remember what I did there because otherwise it'll take me a while to find something like this again obviously we got the return trajectory is a crash course to Kerbin but we've got another thousand or so Delta V for the return stage so we'll be able to avoid that and get our periapsis proper so no worries about that part of it just yet first we need to make sure we do these burns pro uh, correctly so yep and oh maybe I should use uh, remote tech to handle it let's say we tell it to point towards the node because this thing turns horribly uh, of course I could turn on RCS but we might need that still uh, I'll, I could reconsider that later on so yeah uh, we want and specify meters per second so that I don't I, I like a space there. So how long will this take? Uh, it's only going to be two days, 23 hours to the moon, periapsis. So yeah, I think we should be fine on all our uh, consumables. Consumables are okay. Currently flying over what looks like the Andes Mountains in South America, right? Is this what this is? Yeah, I think this is Chile. Peru. Okay, no, no, we need to. Okay, uh, I'm going to, well, let's check whether it's, okay, it's very unstable. We'll use these unleash rockets for this one. Because this is a little bit more and actually I need to oh god why is it wiggling stop that just stop stop and yeah oh I hate when I place that and so we'll set that there and alright uh, actually this is probably too long now some of that Delta V was taken care of by the LH rockets Okay, well, I'm going to preset a zero meter per second zero throttle thing here, and so that I can turn it off when I need to. Okay, well, uh, we're on our translunar injection, translunar insertion, translunar something starting with an I. Where are we now? Wow, that was uh, some serious time warping. Sorry. Some serious time warping. We're over the Nile here. This is Egypt. The Red Sea. I suppose I might as well check our scientific instruments to see if there's anything new we can do. Grasslands? Really? 
I, I did uh, add custom biomes, I think, to this install, I hope. Uh, otherwise, the biomes would be totally wrong, and they might be. Maybe I maybe I put custom biomes on a different install. I'll have to check where I got them in, got it in this install. So custom biomes is a mod that lets you change the biomes, obviously, and important uh, when playing with Earth, because otherwise you'll get the wrong biomes, and... Well, I, actually, we should be o over water now. What does it say? I don't know. Maybe I forgot to put custom biomes in this one. I'll have to fix that. Now the new version of Real Solar System has adjusted moon textures, I think. So I wonder if there's a custom biomes configuration for that yet. I'll probably need that. Because if it is, if the moon texture is really the moon with all of its moon craters, and of course, uh, you know, sea of tranquility and everything like that, then we will need the custom biomes to handle that. So I'll have to take a look at that. So here we are over Saudi Arabia. The plain of the Tigris and Euphrates River there. You can see it very clearly. Quite a significant floodplain. So, yeah, uh, might be worth mentioning that that uh, there is an ISS cam now. I, I don't know how recent it is, but there is uh, now an HD camera. Uh, for the ISS, so you could probably type in ISS HD viewer or something like that. HDV, I think it was something like that. Uh, I think it's the HDV experiment or something. Anyway, uh, the point is that uh, there's a camera on the ISS that uh, provides a continuous HD feed of Earth, right? Uh, it, the camera is pointed at Earth and so you can see Earth roll by. Obviously, uh, for half of it, it's going to be dark, but but maybe of some interest. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay, well, I'm going to manually relight. I don't know what happened there. Did... How... I put meters per second, I put 3000. Did it read this? I didn't click burn again. I didn't uh, tell it to stop. I'm a bit worried. I'm always worried about the flight computer. I don't know why it would stop like that. Good thing I pack in some spare relight fuel. Well, hopefully flight computer is actually done with. But it might suddenly decide that it's in charge again, so I'll have to remember to pull it out if there's anything that goes wrong. Okay, I'll, I'll cut it a little bit short and then use the RCS to push myself the extra few Delta V. Let's just make sure that things are going right. Plan trajectory and everything. I don't know, it seems like we're a little bit off. I don't think this 6.2 meters per second is going to put me back on quite right. You can see the gap between the plan trajectory and what we're doing right now. Might be because the burn ended up being a little bit late. Okay, I think I've finished the RCS portion of this burn. 
and if we take a look at the maneuver that we had plotted it's totally off now but we can adjust that hopefully hopefully we still get the fun little encounter that we had before somehow I'm still not gonna pay too much attention to what happens on the earth side of this not just yet 50 kilometers I think that's pretty good it's as good as we need it that's your so let's just get to Yep, let's just get to the node and then we'll have to try and spin the rocket in order to get this engine relit. If we can't get the engine relit, we'll have to put him on a free return trajectory back to Kerbin instead of trying for the moonshot. Well, I mean, moon flyby. Let's not call it a moonshot. Okay, now, I think uh, this is still trying to control me, is it? Yes, it is. Uh, okay, now I've got control. So, uh, what's our... Oh, it's unstable, okay. Let's use our CS, spin the rocket. Okay, very stable, very nice. Let's hope it stays that way as we go around. Okay, it's a little bit early, but let's take advantage of the fact that it's stable. Okay, we'll do the rest of everything with RCS, so... Yeah, so we need to actually recover our periapsis is the problem here. Let's see if this helps or not. I think it will, hopefully. Uh, I can't be sure it is working, so let me add a maneuver a little lot closer than that to see if we can fix this up. And that's 50 kilometers. All right. There we have it. Camden Kerman leaving Earth's sphere of influence soon. And let's see if we can log some gravity. To oh, Kerman's Highlands. Hmm. I wonder if with the fixes recently, transmitting data might cost more than I think it does. Well, let's let's just make sure we get some science out of this. Oh, yes it does. Look at that. Wow. It's just consuming electric charge all over the place. So, we'll keep data from now on. Can't be done right now. And if I'm not mistaken, Camden is the first Kerbal to be this far out. So hopefully, I think we were beyond the Van Allen belts. I think uh, we should be fine for EVAing him. Hey, 
Okay, keep data. Port. Uh, only eight points, unfortunately, but you know, we take what we can get. Now, uh, on this trajectory, what's going to happen is that uh, well, we've got some some asteroids really close. Unfortunately, we don't have the claw, so I, I don't know if we're going to get the claw. Anyway, uh, on this trajectory, what's going to happen is that they're both everything is going to crash into Kerbin, well, burn up in Kerbin's atmosphere. So we can detach this stage. I think we might as well dump it now. Throttle is down. Yep, let's let's dump this stage. There we go. That'll relieve some of the stress on the on the RCS ports. I really should have done that before making the RCS correction. So let's see if the force of that kick, yeah, it did uh, adjust our periapsis a bit. Should have done that before fixing up this. But not a huge problem. All right. So I think we're all all set to go now. Well, pods free of its encumberment. All right, let us continue. So here we are, Moon Sphere of Influence. And before I do anything else, and we start sightseeing, uh, what we need to do is add a maneuver at uh, now a lower periapsis, and we'll do the adjustment to Kerbin orbit here. So we'll regain a... Uh, hopefully... Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, Kerbin periapsis. And we'll set that to about 80 kilometers. Oh, if we can. <sighs> I mean, the same movement can sometimes be registered as a lot more than I think it should be. Whatever, 85, fine. I'm fine. That's fine. We can do that. 50 meters per second. No problem. This thing keeps blinking. Okay. Well, we'll be back home in four days, three hours, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's worried because my drain is more than my generation, but seven days is plenty of time. And we've got 18 days of food, water, and oxygen, so that's no problem either. Okay, so no problems there. Let's see about some of our experiments. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, we've done a lot of the moon stuff, but I don't think we've done an EVA here. Yeah, keep that data this time. Okay, there's Kerbin, not Kerbin, Earth. And there's the moon. Still quite far away, even though we are in its sphere of influence. So yeah, moon texture and bump map, I think. So, hmm. What was it? Uh, magnificent Desolation? Got more color on it than the normal Kerbin texture though. Okay, camera reoriented on its own. And let's do some science. Before we have to do the burn. No, not the parachutes. Uh, no, not the parachutes. Wow, 
Okay, uh, maybe the lighting has got me. There, that one. Uh, Midlands, but that's fine. Let's let's EVA again. Okay, keep that. Oh, it's high over the wing. We'll have to get closer before doing anything more. Okay. I hope at some point we get better definition on these craters, though. I don't know. I don't know how the textures work. I know the texture image itself is not that big. I'm used to flight sim and, you know, uh, high resolution textures. You know, in flight sim you, you get uh, stuff down to less than one meter per pixel. And those tend to be quite huge. For something the size of the moon it'd be crazy. Usually the high resolution, high resolution textures are only certain parts of the globe. Uh, just, okay, let's see VA. Where are you? Okay, keep that data. Midlands, well, okay, uh... Well, it looks like we're getting down to maybe looking right here. Okay, I think we passed some sort of point where the look of things change. Uh, it does look magnificent though. But am I gonna get anything other than Midlands? Still got 54 seconds. Let's quickly try and EVA him. Okay, East Far Side Crater, keep data. Really should have gotten those custom biomes in though. Maybe we would be getting real features of the moon if I did. Don't know for sure though. Could just be this the standard biomes even if I did get some sort of custom biomes for the moon. Okay, we're getting close to the maneuver node, so I'm not gonna try and EVA him soon. Let's get this maneuver done first. Shouldn't take long to do 50 meters per second, though these are the small rockets. They they're just one kill Newton, right? I think so. So let's go for this burn now. Okay, let's see the situation on the return. Uh, 97 is fine. I'll deal with that. Okay. How's everything else going? I, I keep forgetting to put a, a RCS tank in the command pod. Can definitely do that, but I just forget. I'm gonna move some of the remaining. Uh, I'll do this again before we uh, drop the service module, but I'm gonna move some of the hydrazine up. Okay, as Camden gets to enjoy the sight of a very dark moon. I guess before it gets too dark, we should have him EVA one more time. I think we've gotten this one before. Let me just keep data, try to board, and then dump experiments. Okay. Back log in gravity data. Oh, it's actually useful. Okay. Uh, keep data. And we'll do use the gravioli to check whether we're on a new 
biome before sending Candon out again. I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, if it lets me, looks like it's keeping this data. So maybe I'm not gonna get to do that. Oh well. Well, I think this has been a fine mission so far. Just in terms of science. Shall we send him out one more time? I guess we'll give it a go. No use. We said experiments. Report. Can we get a crew report? The usual one? Okay, keep. Okay, now we're departing. I think we'll just leave it at that and continue on. And we're actually being shot back retrograde like this. Okay, I do want to take a look at our electric charge situation one day. Uh, seems like we're very much in the dark. Uh, are we pointed? Yeah, we're pointed in the wrong direction. Let's let's get some let's get some sunlight here. I think we should be able to charge these batteries a bit. We've all we've just got these little tiny solar panels, but they're better than nothing. And we've pretty much doubled our time, and it wouldn't have been a problem anyway, because current periapsis is in 15 hours. Oh, what side are we coming on? Uh, bright. I think we'll be in the light when we arrive there. Well, it's 15 hours, so it's tough to say, but I think we should be fine. Okay, there's Earth. Earth, it's Earth. Not Kerbin. And we continue. <laughs> So the issue right now is not so much uh, re-entry heat as G-forces on re-entry. Oh, Camden is looking a little bit crazy there. Anyway, um, yeah, because we're going to be decelerating much more than we would from a normal orbital thing. And even with the orbital missions, we saw G-forces of 67 Gs. So, got to be a little bit worried about what's going to happen to Camden here. Okay, around here I want to start looking into a retro burn to slow us and prevent the high g-forces I was talking about. Okay, 78. There is a chance we might have to go around and skip off the atmosphere. I, I tend to do that a lot. Uh, I, I, it's because we don't have some of the risks that the normal return missions that NASA does would have. We don't have the risk of landing in a unpleasant location. In fact, the chances that we'll hit water are pretty good. Um, but, you know, that's, that is a risk. And then, of course, there are other mechanical issues that we don't have to deal with. So... Okay, right now, before I forget, I want to do some transferring. 
burst uh, whatever remaining hydrazine we can into the top. Then also, I want to transfer consumables into the pod. Okay, I think we're configured for return. Let's get to the planned maneuver. Don't know. Th this will take quite a long time, I think. Let's let's try and light them now and see how long it'll take. Yeah. Okay, well I'm satisfied with that for now. Uh, sunrise it looks like. We're gonna get a sunrise here. You can see it really wasn't uh, too early at all. We are getting close to atmospheric encounter as we speak. And I'm just contemplating the dumping of the service module stage. Mm, nah, I need to move hydrazine again. Come on. Okay. I think this is the best I can do for now. Maybe periapsis is a bit too high. It's tough to say, but I'll I'll uh, I'll adjust it using RCS rather than the thrusters on the service module. So I'm gonna dump the service module now. Okay, preparing to do so. Okay, it's away. So now our heat shield is uncovered. This says command pod, the blade of shielding, I should say, not the heat shield. It's a blade of shielding on the pod itself. Gotta keep RCS on to maintain attitude as we watch the sunrise here. So the plan is, go around is acceptable. In fact, right now we have plenty of modes to bring Camden back, including rescuing him in orbit. Right now, a mission would be able to get to him and pick him up, if that would be necessary. Uh, it would be a remote-controlled, empty command pod in that case. Okay, here we go. First encounter with the critical portion of the orbit. And I think we're going to be going around, which is not bad. Would like to hit the Pacific or some really large body of water. But I don't know if we'll be able to finagle that one. Well, at this point, I don't see any particular reason to mess with our trajectory. I don't think our periapsis is too low, and there's no way to really adjust our apoapsis here. So I think we just go around again. And it looks like we'll be landing in the Pacific, so that's good too. At least on the way up it looked like that would be the case. So hopefully the... well the world has rotated a little bit, so... I just hope it rotated in the right direction. Let's just take a look at that. Um, so... Go on. Yeah, I think we're pretty safely landing in the Pacific here. Even if we were forced to go around again, I think we'd end up in the Pacific. 
The Pacific is very big. Let's let's be honest. I don't think there's any point doing physical time warp. I, I, I am my foot. I think it's actually faster without physical time warp at this point. Hmm, this might not be enough. Been a while since I've done one of these. I mean, I know the basic area where I want to hit, but... This one is a little bit different. And of course, previously I've been doing it with the three-person pod, because the, 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 I mean, the last real time I did was in the testing and then the recording of the Apollo-style mission. And so, different pod, different dynamics. Okay, I think we're definitely going to be going back out, so let me just time warp a bit. Actually, in the meantime, I'm going to use some RCS to perhaps drop my apoapsis a bit. Just so that the next time we come around, we'll definitely be dropping. All right, well, third time's the charm, right? You would certainly hope so. Let's get this orientation right. I'm actually trying to keep the nose up a bit. I don't like the way the periapsis was actually dropping there. maintain a little bit of lift here. Though I do want it to go down. I absolutely want it to actually land this time, but I don't want it to land hard. Okay. We are returning. Oh. Right, uh, saw a few boosters. That's fine. Yes, they were on this side. Shoots are the only thing I'm interested in. G forces getting beyond five G's. Six G's. Seven G's. Eight G's. More than eight G's. Should peak around here. The indicator is a little bit off, so I don't know if we actually passed 9 G's or not. Camden shoe sure looks fine. I'm letting the hydrazine burn off, there's no reason not to. Okay, I think uh, we're good for parachute deployment. 
Yep. SAS off. If necessary, we can dump these cans. I don't know how much mass these two parachutes can take. I know now that uh, real shoots has is tweakable under the under the um, what's that menu called the uh, the action groups menu, just like real fuels is, but. I didn't use that to build this particular craft, so. We are landing in the Pacific, I believe. Yep. Dead center. Far away from any possibility of rescue. No, I mean, yeah, I assume there are ships standing by. Let's just take a quick look at what the 9.1 G's it was. Okay. Okay, we're through the clouds. Getting ready for full parachute deployment. Okay, there we go. Parachutes are open. And our velocity is down to safe levels, so I won't bother trying to dump uh, more RCS. I could have had thrusters far downward trying to get rid of as much hydrazine as possible, but I think we're alright. Okay. There we go. All right, let's recover before saying anything else. And so, Camden Kerman returned with a bounty of 173 signs. Uh, Inclu uh, not including 22 that he had transmitted earlier, though that's probably not the really the sum total of his achievement. Obviously, he did the first uh, Earth orbit rendezvous. He he managed the first flyby of the moon, first manned flyby of the moon. So I think it's safe to say that uh, he has far surpassed our expectations and shown that regardless of whether a Kerbal is one of the big three and uh, anything else. A Kerbal can overcome his stats, basically. So to do great things, a Kerbal can can overcome just about anything. So there we are. The Asimov 2474 mission returns a success. Uh, though the mission actually was adjusted halfway through to be a moon flyby mission, which it was not intended to be. But we did it. We did it. Uh, I wonder why we still... I mean, we've done flybys of the moon, haven't we? Well, anyway, we got science for that, too. Uh, okay, so let's take a quick look at the tech tree. So progress is being made, and... Uh, why? Oh, uh, two meter by two meter solar panels. I guess that's a new thing for some reason. Okay. Uh, one update or another added that in. So yeah, this is the state of our tech tree as it is. Uh, this is still realistic progression light version 18 as opposed to 1919. 19, totally reworked this, changed everything, fixed some of the issues that I have with this tech tree and so you should use that one but it's gonna look different from this one and that's just how it's gonna be. Keythane. Keythane is a thing that we might need to start working on now that we've done this. Because after all, what's the point of going to the desolate moon if not to prospect for Keythane? Though precision engineering of higher order might be something interesting. So yeah, this is uh, this is how we'll end it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.